Hello, I'm Peter Brummel, and today we're going to be doing an unboxing of some various hominid casts that I recently received from Bone Clones. And so I've got a few hominid fossils in this box here, and I've also got some modern human bones to compare. So why don't we begin by looking at this first one. This is a chimpanzee femur. And I'll show you why it's important in a moment. So this is the replica chimpanzee femur. You can see it's, it's pretty small compared to our femur, which is our thigh bone. You can see there's the size. It's uh, about two thirds of the length. Uh, but one, what's very interesting about this is that when you set them on a flat surface, they look differently. A human has this angle to their femur because they distribute their weight underneath them whereas a chimpanzee's femur goes straight up and down because the weight is spread out on all four legs because it's a quadruped rather than a biped. So this will be uh, useful in looking at some various fossils. So that's a male chimpanzee femur. So I got this chimpanzee femur mostly because I wanted to compare it to another fossil in this box, which is Lucy, the famous Australopithecus afarensis fossil who also has a preserved left femur. So that's why I chose this left chimpanzee femur. So I can evaluate how Lucy's femur is compared to the femur of the modern human and the femur of the chimpanzee and see, is it more chimp-like, which would mean that it walked like a chimp, or is it more human-like to indicate that it walked more like a human? So um, overall, this is a little smaller than I was expecting it to be. Um, but it's very detailed. I'm impressed. Next up here, this is the Australopithecus afarensis set. So first here I have the upper part of the femur. So Lucy's femur is broken into several pieces. So this is the articular portion. So overall it, it's slightly smaller than that of the chimpanzee femur. And I believe the distal portion is inside this bag here. So right here is another section at the, uh, at the bottom, and this final part right here fits in right here. And so when we put this all together, we can see that Lucy had that same slant to her femur as modern humans do, which indicates that she was walking on two legs like a human rather than on four like a chimpanzee. So this is the sacrum of Lucy. It's in the back of the pelvis. Each of the pelvic blades come off the edges and it's made of several vertebrae that have been fused together. In here in the bag is the left innominate or uh, pelvis of Lucy and they fit together just like this while she was living. So the spinal column is right here, and then this is her left hip bone. So right in here is this joint where the femur would articulate, right in there like that. So this is, you can see once again, the whole pelvis together like that. Interestingly, when this pelvis was being fossilized, an animal appears to have broken on this portion right here and trampled it and crushed it into several pieces, which when it fossilized then were glued back together, so to speak, by the minerals which fossilized it. So there's a little post-mortem distortion, which makes it look a little more chimp-like than it actually was when it was alive. So far we've just been looking at postcranial elements. But for skulls, first up we have Dimenese skull three. So I have two Dimenese skulls here. Both of them come from this site in the Republic of Georgia called Dimenese. And this site has yielded, uh, I believe, five skulls. 
and it's believed these skulls are Homo erectus or possibly their own species. Some people call them Homo georgicus. Uh, they're quite early dated and we'll see the first one in a moment here. So each of these skulls is coming with the jaw and the cranium separate. Okay. So this is Dimenizi skull three. I can compare it here to another Homo erectus individual. This is Turkana boy. And you can see overall they look quite similar. They have a similar angle to their face. Dimenizi has a bit smaller nose than Turkana boy, who has a very, very large nose. The brow ridge isn't quite as pronounced as in Turkana boy, even though it's cracked off, we can kind of postulate that his brow ridge was quite large. The brain size uh, looks a little smaller. Overall, I like how this uh, Homo erectus was done. You can see that in gray here are areas of the skull that weren't preserved, and uh, the uh, more fossil-looking coloring is the fragments which have been preserved and pieced back together. We can see on the bottom here the foramen magnum in the center of the skull, just like in Homo erectus right here, and in modern humans. It has a nice weight to it, and it looks very nice. This is the mandible for Dimenizi's skull three. It's a complete mandible except for two incisors in the front, which are missing. There are a couple more teeth missing on the skull itself. Um, you can see here how the jaw articulates with the skull. Um, the attachment points are actually missing on each of the sides of the jaw, so it doesn't exactly touch at the back, but you can see kind of how it would have fit together. Let's see, I believe we will next open Dimenizi's Skull 5, which I think is this one here. Yes, this is Skull 5. This is a one that is a little more unique than that one. That one is a, like pretty typical Homo erectus. This one is even a little more bizarre looking. It has some features which make it quite different from Homo erectus, which has prompted some scientists to even call it Homo georgicus. It's separate species. All these fossils come pretty nicely wrapped to prevent their damage. So here we go. This is Dimenizi Skull 5. So this skull you can see is quite different looking from the last one. It has a much, much heavier brow ridge that is overhanging the eyes. It doesn't have even quite as much pulled out of a face, but it does have a little bit smaller, perhaps, of a brain case, maybe around the same size. There's these distinct grooves on either side of the skull for muscle attachments. Overall, you can see it's much more heavily built. and almost more ape-like than the last skull. This is the jaw. This one has both of the condyles preserved, so I believe it should articulate with the skull perfectly. And there we go, yes, it does articulate. And you can see uh, the, the jaw has no chin here. That's something that isn't seen in modern humans. All modern humans have chins. 
but all of these Dimenezi skulls lack chins. You can see uh, there's quite a bit of the dentition preserved. In the back here, we have very large molars compared to humans who have a bit smaller molars compared to their incisors. So this will be a very interesting skull to study just because of its unique morphology and its uh, robustness. And then, right here, we have the final skull, which is Homo floresiensis. So this is nicknamed the Hobbit. It's from the island of Flores. And there's various theories about it. Uh, some people believe that it is its unique species. Uh, others believe it's a microcephalic or somebody with Down syndrome. So this skull is uh, smaller than these other ones, and I believe it does have a jaw as well. Yes, so here we have the skull of the Hobbit. You can see it is a very small skull. I can bring over here my human skull for comparison is a very very small compared to the human skull side by side the human skull dwarfs this skull and yet this is the skull of an adult individual so uh, we have these population on the island of floors which is very small interestingly today we actually have a group of pygmies that lives nearby so possibly this could have been some type of pygmy individual or it could be its own unique species or it could be some type of pathological uh, result. We have the jaw here as well and this jaw once again to fit this skull is very small. <laughs> you can see look at this jaw look how small that is and it there we go all together like that can see. So overall it's a very, very small head and a very small jaw. You can see the uh, modern human jaw and the Florizansis jaw together and the modern human jaw is much larger. The modern human has a chin once again which the Florizansis does not. Uh, the tooth size in Florizansis may be somewhat the, the molar size may be somewhat larger in comparison to the incisors than in modern humans. So this will be interesting to study and see what the evidence leads towards, whether it's a pathological individual or whether it is a species in its own right. Overall, I'm pleased with the quality of the skulls. The painting is very nice, how they've made it look uh, almost exactly like the original. Um, I haven't really had time to evaluate yet, but I would assume that they're going to be probably pretty morphologically correct uh, since they have a whole team who is working on producing these as similar to the original as they can get. So um, for the money that I paid, I would say that uh, this was probably worth it since there's not a whole lot of companies who are selling things like this. And because you can't make 3D prints of these particular models because they aren't available. So because of the uh, rarity of trying to even buy these things, I would say that they were worth the money paid for them. The skulls and post-cranial elements vary but in price depending on the size. Smaller skull and jaw sets like this one probably cost around $300, whereas larger skulls like the dim and easy ones cost probably around 380 or something like that uh, to get the chimpanzee femur was around $80 itself but that's not including shipping and other things which add to the cost so today felt like Christmas because these were actually my Christmas presents I got for myself just very very long delayed because of the shipping and processing 
So I'm very happy to have received these and I will definitely have a lot of um, hours in evaluating them and comparing them to each other and to other 3D models that I've made. So hopefully in the future I'll have some videos made on some of these individuals specifically and getting a little more into depth on each of them. Thank you all for watching today.